Ugh, I'm feeling a little hungry right now. Hungry to play all the Yoshi games and rank them? This list is based off how much fun I have with them, as well as how they've aged over time. So without further ado, let's get her ranked. 16. Yoshi Game Boy Like Kirby, there's a handful of random puzzle games that came out in the 80s and 90s, and this is one of the worst ones. It's not necessarily a bad game, but there's virtually no reason to go back and play it ever. The goal is to make matches of two characters to remove them from the screen. You'll also try to match up the bottom and top of an egg, which can take out enemies from in between. What makes this puzzle game so unique is you don't move the falling pieces, but the bottom layer. And frankly, I can't think of any other puzzler that functions like this. It's a bit funky to wrap your head around. I played Yoshi for a while, and while I got the hang of it, there just wasn't that much that was hooking me. Your options are pretty limited in terms of setting up combos. You can only do so much when there's only four columns to move around. 15. Yoshi NES In here we have the NES counterpart. The main difference is that it looks a little better, and the chiptunes are a bit more enjoyable to listen to. Although there's nothing that's really memorable in either of these games, which is unfortunately common when a melody is limited to such a small sound library. The gameplay is the same, and I gotta be straight with you guys, Mario's face creeps me out. Something about it just looks off, and I don't know what it is. 14. Yoshi Safari Mario Ride the Yosh, but with gun. That is literally Yoshi Safari, and nobody remembers that this game exists. Probably because it had to be played with a super scope and a tube TV, which isn't that easy to accomplish nowadays. A light gun game on the SNES probably sounds like an awful idea, but it actually works. As you'd expect, you shoot a million enemies on screen, but you'll also jump at specific times for some variety. That's really the extent of Yoshi Safari. There's a lot of repetition when it comes to the enemy selection. Get used to seeing Koopas, Cheep Cheeps, and Goombas. Apparently that's all Bowser has on staff. While the enemy repetition makes the game drag a bit, it's worth playing for the boss fights as they're all really interesting. Wendy requires you to time out shooting an anvil over her head, and so many of the designs just look really cool. I also love how the backgrounds are inspired from Super Mario Kart's courses, which doesn't make sense because we aren't in the Mushroom Kingdom, technically, but you can clearly see the resemblance. And can we just talk about Yoshi's smug as f face before and after a level? Just look at this f goober. There's also a two-player mode where the second player can control Yoshi, which is a pretty neat way of including co-op. While the game is very charming, it's difficult to play on a technical level. You can emulate it and move around with a mouse, but it's not even close to the same experience, and it's a very short game too. You can beat the whole thing in like an hour or so. 13. Yoshi Topsy Turvy Nintendo said, Wow, Kirby Tilt and Tumble is great! While that game is still a marvel for just existing, this one has somewhat decent controls. You'll still move around with Yoshi using the D-pad, and you can still jump and eat enemies. Although you can't make aches for some reason, which is a really odd change. The gimmick here is that you can run up walls by tilting your Game Boy Advance. I don't completely hate the idea, but this should have been delegated to the shoulder buttons instead of tilt controls. I mean, it's not like the tilting doesn't work because it does, it just doesn't feel pinpoint accurate. And it technically isn't. You have to turn at very specific degrees to activate the tilt. Any less and it just won't work. The limited amount of tilting really kills the gimmick. This could have actually been a cool little game if the technology was just a bit better. There are some interesting transformations as well. I really like Ball Yoshi because, I mean, just look at him. Then you've got Ship Yoshi which pulls a monkey ball in which you move the water instead of Yoshi himself, and there's also only only two bosses, Cardboard Bowser and Bowser. For Game Boy Advance standards, that is incredibly lame, even for a gimmick-based game like this one. Frankly, Yoshi Topsy Turvy just came out too early. If it were made in the 2010s when the technology was better, it might have been a big hit. 12. Yoshi Touch and Go Here's yet another game I saw in the stores as a kid and always wanted to try it out. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm really glad I never bought it when I was younger, because it's a pretty small minigame slash platform hybrid collection. It's still enjoyable for what it is, there just isn't much to play. You got four different modes to try out. Score Attack, Marathon, Time Attack, and Challenge. For all the minigames, there's two segments. The first one has Baby Mario slowly falling to the ground, and you'll guide him around by drawing clouds to avoid enemies and collect coins. You can also make bubbles around some enemies and turn them into coins, which you can throw at Baby Mario. The controls for this are pretty fluid and work well, simply because the gameplay is so simple. If it were any more complicated, the touch controls may have felt clunky and annoying. The second segment has Yoshi auto running, and you'll collect more coins and jump for fruit to get eggs. You can also hit enemies for coins. It's a pretty enjoyable gameplay loop. 
What I've explained to you is essentially the entire game. It's just those two segments. Score Attack focuses on getting a high score. Marathon is endless, and you'll try to get as far as possible. Time Attack is a harder version of Score Attack, and Challenge combines Time Attack and Marathon. And that's about it, besides a multiplayer mode. It feels like this game should have been a bonus with a mainline Yoshi game. 11. Yoshi's Cookie Game Boy One of the better puzzle games. It's also a bit confusing when you first play it. There's a bunch of cookies on the screen, and you have to get rid of them all to clear a round. You can move any of them around horizontally or vertically, but lines are only cleared if there's a full column matched up. The Yoshi cookies are kind of like freebies. You can line those up and make matches with them as substitutes. The chiptunes for this game are okay, but again, it's nothing you'll think about for years to come. As I'm sure you'd expect, there's better ways to play this. 10. Yoshi's Cookie NES It's the same game, but the gameplay is a little bit more approachable. It doesn't feel nearly as claustrophobic, which is nice, and obviously the game looks and sounds better. It has a more addicting quality compared to just Yoshi, which maybe that's just my personal preference, but that's just how I feel about the matter. There's a lot more creativity and options when it comes to making matches. That's a key ingredient to making a fun puzzle game. I also love Chef Mario. He just looks so relaxed and chilled. 9. Yoshi's Cookie SNES In this one spaced off the NES version, but with an extra mode. The main game is more the same thing, although Type B music absolutely bops, take a listen. It's been so cool playing all these random old games recently, because I'm able to find these hidden gems that nobody remembers. The general gameplay is also a bit faster, and I like how Mario and Yoshi both control the cookie movements. Although I have to say it again, Mario's face looks wrong. And hey, I appreciate the new sprites, but he just looks mad the whole time. What's wrong? What, are you really that pissed about making cookies? Huh? There's also a puzzle mode, where you'll make matches in as little movements as possible. Of all of Yoshi's puzzle games, this one is actually worth checking checking out. 8. Yoshi's Story By far the strangest platformer that Nintendo has ever developed. This is another childhood game I knew existed, but never had the chance to play until now. To start, the entire structure of Yoshi's Story is really convoluted. The goal is to collect 30 fruits in each level, and then you move on. And when I say move on, I mean move on to the next world. There's more levels in that specific world, but you can't play any new ones until you've beaten the game once. So you basically have to play through each world for four times to try every level out. I have no idea why the game is set up like this. Maybe it's to change up the pacing? I don't know. I genuinely don't get it. But even so, it's still a fairly short game. The levels are also non-linear, so you can find the fruits in any order you want. And each level offers something new every time, so there's a reason to try them all out. The graphics are also super cute, and everything is animated beautifully. It's probably the nicest looking N64 game that I've seen, and that's coming from someone that owns all of them. You can play as a bunch of colored Yoshi, so that's nice that you can pick whichever one you want. The bosses are unfortunately really underwhelming, which is kind of a trend for most Yoshi games. They're just really basic and boring to fight. Even Baby Bowser at the end is ridiculously easy because the super happy tree lets you regain health infinitely, and you have to fight him four times to play all the levels. On top of that, there's a trial mode where you can replay the levels for a higher score. I don't really care about this, but the extra mode is still nice to include. But yeah, this game was criticized pretty harshly back in the day, and while I understand the reasoning for that, it's still a cool one to try out. 7. Yoshi's New Island I'm not sure why Nintendo has this obsession with calling their games new so often, and honestly, I forgot this game even came out, and after playing through it, <laughs> I understand why. Now, let's get things straight. Yoshi's New Island is fun if you like the original game. The general gameplay remains the same and true to how it used to be. In fact, it follows the source material a bit too closely. Yoshi's Island tried something brand new by adding in different babies. This game gives you Big Egg, which, if I'm being honest, makes me feel nothing. I have played so many Nintendo games where the gimmick is just big, and I am bored to death of that. It's not even that gratifying considering the big egg segments are rarely used for interesting puzzles. At least with the metal egg, you sink underwater and can use it to access secret areas, even though that doesn't make sense because the egg isn't attached to Yoshi, but it's just not enough. Yoshi's New Island really takes a lot of liberties from the new Super Mario Bros. series. The entire game is sterile and bland. Now, like I said, it's still fun to play, but it's a lot of small 
all things that really add up over time. To start, the gameplay feels a bit slower than usual. Things like ground pounding, eating eggs, and crouching have this lagginess to them. Even throwing eggs standing still has lag. This doesn't kill the pacing of the game completely, but it's not even close to as smooth as the original, that's for sure. When you get the invincibility stars, Yoshi just runs really fast instead of Baby Mario doing it, which is kinda lame. And don't even get me started on the bosses. Half of them are just Kamek, which gets old real quick, and the other half are just super easy. At least they're all different types of fights unlike New Super Mario Bros, but that's not saying much. And dude, the final boss is somehow the most uninspired yet random fight ever. You fight Baby Bowser, he grows big, and the whole time you just chuck the egg and win. Aiming doesn't really matter. And then out of complete nowhere, Bowser bursts onto the scene, and I quote, from space and time. Which is actually a really cool idea, but the final boss doesn't do anything interesting. You just fight Bowser with a metal egg a few times, and then it's a repeat of the Bowser Jr. fight, but instead it's Bowser. I think a big problem with Yoshi's New Island is that a lot of the music doesn't even attempt to set the tone. I'd say at least half the songs are pretty good, but when they get bad, they get bad. Just listen to this level in World 6. I just want to point out this is the level before the final boss. Why is the music so calm and tedious? But hey, I gotta give them credit for turning down the volume on Baby Mario's crying. It's not nearly as annoying as it usually is. And the transformations are also kind of cool because they all use tilt controls. I especially love bobsled Yoshi because he just looks so happy with his shades on. So all in all, you could play this game in an afternoon, have some fun, and then forget it exists a couple days later. It plays itself way too safe to be memorable at all. 6. Yoshi's Island DS The original SNES version is so good that Nintendo tried to reboot it twice. While we already talked about the second reboot, this first attempt isn't half bad. It feels a lot like classic Yoshi's Island, where you'll run through large levels and explore to find flowers and red coins. The main difference is the number of babies, and I'm pretty conflicted on this. On one hand, it's awesome to have a bunch of variety since the babies all have different abilities. Mario lets you run, Peach has an umbrella for higher jumps, DK can climb, Wario grabs coins, and Baby Bowser breathes fire. Yeah, Baby Bowser's in this game, which is weird because he's capable of walking, but he makes Yoshi do his bidding anyway. I don't know, it's goofy. It's honestly kind of cool. However, the main problem with the babies is you can't swap them on the fly. There's so many times where a different baby needs to be used to get somewhere, and there isn't always a stork sign nearby to switch them. It's not nearly as obnoxious as, say, Donkey Kong 64, but it's still an inherent flaw that could have easily been fixed. It's also hilarious how when using DK, DK, the eggs sound like explosions. I guess that's supposed to signify DK's strength, but that'd be like if you slammed a door and the vine boom went off. As for the levels, most of them are pretty enjoyable and designed well. I should clarify most of them, because there's a few levels that drove me absolutely bonkers, to the point of rage quitting which I rarely do nowadays. The level design is occasionally either too long or convoluted beyond belief. Teeth chattering chill zone in particular is just awful. You have to jump from ice platform to ice platform while avoiding a bunch of bumpty and these pink bouncy pieces of sh that lock onto you. I must have played this level 50 times, and there was nothing I could do about the pink blobby f you just get to a point where you accept you're gonna die if they land in the right spot. You'll also swap from playing the game on the top and bottom screen, which feels really unnecessary if you ask me, but it doesn't really alter how the game plays. The last thing I have to mention is the music. Wildlands is a bop, but everything else is just off. The score has this happy vibe like the original game does, but none of the excitement. Even the boss music is really slow and monotonous. Maybe it's just me, but the music is really the only thing that I strongly dislike about Yoshi's Island DS. It's it's a pretty solid game, but it doesn't come close to topping the original. 5. Yoshi's Crafted World It seems like this game always gets flack. While it may not be the greatest platformer of all time, it has some pretty cool things to rave about. The art style for one looks amazing. The world genuinely feels like it's entirely made out of cardboard. Nintendo games have this knack of having an idea for an aesthetic and just completely nailing it. Besides the art style, the big gimmick is the foreground and background. A lot of the collectibles are hidden outside of your reach, so you have to really pay attention and explore your surroundings to find these things. You can even play the levels backwards 
backwards after completing them, which is such a neat and interesting way of adding replayability. I really wish 2D Mario games did something like this. That would really enhance those games with little extra effort. The flowers in this game are used to unlock upcoming levels, so this drives an incentive to actually explore and not just blaze through them. It's a really nice change, to be honest, and it's never an overbearing amount of flowers you have to find. The coins you get can also be used to unlock costumes, which are not only extremely creative looking, but are also used as armor during levels. I personally didn't find much use in using them, but I did enjoy trying to collect them all out of curiosity. You've also got a co-op mode, which is just about as much fun as it is in Woolly World. If you played through Crafted World once and that's it, you'll have a good time. However, if you're a completionist, just give up on that dream for this one, seriously. On top of finding all the flowers, you also need to find souvenirs at every level, which might sound fine and dandy, but there's one huge, huge flaw in this. You can only collect one souvenir at a time, so if you want to get more, you'll need to replay the level again and again and again. I don't know if this is a huge oversight or intentionally implemented to pad out game time, but either way, it's completely unnecessary and defeats any incentive to 100% the game. That's not even my main gripe with Crafted World. That award goes to the music again. Like, what in the hell happened here? A lot of it is just ear grating and annoying. It goes for a cutesy sound, which makes it feel like I'm playing a game for literal two-year-olds. Which isn't true at all, but that's the vibe I get from the soundtrack. I'm honestly shocked at how bad it is. But even with that, this game is worth playing at least once if you already enjoy the Yoshi titles. 4. Yoshi's Woolly World Kirby's Epic Yarn is a charming game, so the same company did the same thing but with Yoshi. Although unlike Kirby, this game is more challenging and has a lot more going for it. It's probably my favorite Wii U game that won't get a port to the Switch, which is honestly a crime. Instead of making eggs, you'll make yarn balls, which is ingenious. And also a bit gruesome when you think about it, because if we consider these creatures to be fully alive, that means Yoshi tears them apart into a string and then reconstructs their entire body for throwing. Yeah, imagine that happening to you, that'd be a little painful. But anyway, these yarn balls can be used to hit enemies, but are also able to fill in parts of a stage that needs solid ground. So while the eggs function like normal, there's also an extra layer of depth which makes them more interactable with the levels you're playing. On top of that, you can eat fluff and puffins, which create extended fluff platforms for a limited time. Then finally, the beads you get can be used to get power badges. So every collectible here has a more satisfying purpose. Just these few new elements really make Woolly World feel new and fresh. You'll unlock different colored Yoshis with Wonder Wool, which frankly is one of my favorite parts of this game. It may just be aesthetic, but Yoshi has a perfect yet simple design for creating tons of customization. There's a Wii U Yoshi, N64 Yoshi, GameCube Yoshi, Cotton Candy Yoshi, and that's just a few of my favorites. I really love the co-op mode too. I initially played some of the game with a partner, and it made the whole game all the more enjoyable. A lot of the puzzles are done in a clever way, similar to Kirby's Epic Yarn. You'll have to push walls of yarn to get to secret areas, or roll up certain parts of the ground for hidden collectibles. Like most Yoshi games, there's a handful of transformations to spice things up. The transformations are fine and all, but they aren't that memorable. I probably liked Moto Yoshi the most, he just looks so goofy with his head sticking out in the front. Unfortunately, the level design isn't great from start to finish. There's some later levels that are particularly frustrating, but at least they all try something new each time. The bosses are, par usual, pretty lame. Most of them are recycled from previous games, and some of them repeat several times over. Those are the only two elements holding Woolly World back. It comes so close to being the best Yoshi game of all time. But hey, look at the amiibo! These things are cute enough to make an Alpha Chad male cry. I mean, just look at them! 3. Poochie and Yoshi's Woolly World It would have been so nice to see this ported to the Switch instead of the 3DS, but I'll take what I can get. It's the exact same game and runs just as well as before, assuming you're playing on a new Nintendo 3DS. There are some differences and extra stuff that make it slightly better than the original, despite it not looking as good. The hub world for one is entirely in 2D, which is actually kind of nice because you can get to levels faster. There's also new amiibo costumes on top of all the old ones, which makes this one of the most customizable Nintendo platformers of all time. You can even color in your own Yoshi, which is insanely cool. You'll unlock palettes as you get through the game more. As for why Poochie is in the title of the port, well, that's because he has some new levels you can unlock. These are fast-paced auto runners, and I think they're a pretty solid addition. The Poochie amiibo unlocks skins and time attack for the Poochie levels too, so it's not really locking much behind a paywall. If you care about the customization aspect of Yoshi, there's quite a lot to check out here. And since there's two screens, collectibles are always on the bottom, which is still one of the best things about DS and 3D games, dumping your info into another place. 
2. Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island So, I counted this as a Mario game when ranking all the Mario games recently, but we're playing as Yoshi the whole time, so it's kind of a bit of both. Baby Mario and Baby Luigi are split up, so Yoshi and his tribe decide to help a baby bro out and take him to Luigi. This Yoshi game revolutionized Yoshi platformers to what they are today, and honestly, this one is still the most enjoyable to play. You eat enemies, turn them into eggs, and you can throw them in other enemies, clouds, and things like that. While most Yoshi games have have this same mechanic, the general pace and flow feels the best with this first game. Running around and making turns is super smooth and fluid. Eating eggs and throwing are done almost instantly, which creates a really satisfying gameplay loop. The levels are really great, albeit a few of them tend to feel too long, especially the auto-scrollers, but there's not enough of those to detract from the overall experience. And yes, Baby Mario cries when he's in the bubble, and it's annoying like all the other games. But realistically, this isn't going to happen very often, and it's usually very brief. You can even get different colored Yoshis for each level, so that's pretty cool. The art style is of course breathtaking, and the music is simply infectious. Any and all the tunes will get stuck in your head for hours after playing. The bosses are also really fun to fight, the highlights being the frog's uvula and baby Bowser himself. One thing I haven't mentioned in the past is unlocking the bonus in extra levels. In order to do this, you have to achieve perfect scores in every level first. This is very difficult to do because you have to find all 5 flowers, 20 hidden red coins, and complete the level with 30 stars or health. This task is daunting in the later levels and in most Yoshi games, so if you're looking for a challenge, this game definitely provides one. But what about that part on the Game Boy Advance? 1. Yoshi's Island Super Mario Advance 3 Well, this is a take I didn't think I'd make. Remaking slash porting all the classic Mario games for the Game Boy Advance was a brilliant move on Nintendo's end. Take these timeless classics with you on the go, while simultaneously introducing a brand new generation to these games, including yours truly. This Yoshi's Island port is really faithful to the original. They even did a great job compressing the art style onto a tiny screen. I do have to admit that the sound design isn't anywhere close to as good. It sounds pretty crunchy and monotone, compared to what's produced on the SNES. I know they can't really be helped because this is on the Game Boy Advance, but the music in this game is one of the best parts about it, so that is a little disappointing. However, this game has brand new content that the SNES one doesn't, including six brand new levels. More levels to play is always a good thing, topping off at 60, which is just crazy. And there's also a remake of Mario Bros, as I'm sure you know, and it's simply fantastic. The controls and physics are a thousand times better compared to the arcade and NES ports, and everything looks and sounds much better too. I do have to say that playing it as an adult, it does feel a tad too easy. I got to round 30 without much trouble, but it's still incredibly addicting to smack enemies while avoiding the fireballs and whatnot. It's got a really good flow to it, and even the original game has a nice flow. After replaying this game and the original, I decided to put this higher just because of the new stuff they added. Although, to be honest, the original and this port could easily be interchanged. It really just depends on my mood. Well, now that I'm done with all those, I've come to realize that there really aren't that many Yoshi games out there, and there's only a handful that are really worth trying out. So here's to the future of the Green Dinos franchise, and with that said, thank you for watching. Ta-ta! Big Yoshi. We like Big Yoshi.